Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press corps. I want to thank you for coming to this press conference at a very short notice. This press is meant to be an update on the resolution of the disputed August elections 2023. As you may be aware, this is an address to you all as our stakeholders, fellow citizens. And I must say that um, I've prepared this brief statement to update you on the efforts around the resolution of the disputed outcome of 2023 general elections that did not produce a credible and legitimate government chosen by the citizens of Zimbabwe. As you are aware, following the shambolic and disputed illegal August 2023 elections, we held nationwide consultations with you, the citizens, and all of you, including other relevant stakeholders, were consulted on the ways and means to resolve the electoral fraud and the disputed election. You, the citizens, the citizens of Zimbabwe, were very clear and very firm on the position that the elections were improperly conducted, indeterminate, and produced a distorted and manipulated outcome. This position is and was supported by SADC, the African Union, the European Union, the Commonwealth, COMESA, the Qatar Center, and all other intergovernmental organizations which displayed a clear derision out of the way and manner in which the elections were conducted. All those who deployed their election observer missions to Zimbabwe had a common view. And what is clear is that there is no election in history, particularly in this country, that is invited resounding and universal condemnation as we have seen during the August 2023 elections. This matter must be resolved. This matter must be fixed. There can never be a proper government without proper elections. There can never be a proper government without proper national processes that have the credibility and endorsement of the citizens of Zimbabwe. Fellow citizens, as your presidential choice, you, in your millions, nearly over two million, gave a clear mandate, albeit in a very disputed and contested election. And that mandate cannot be repudiated, abdicated, abandoned, or squandered. I'm clear that upon this mandate, and with your mandate, on the 26th of September, 2023, we wrote to our regional board, SADC, the guarantor of the values and principles and aspirations of the common agenda and common will of the people of Southern Africa. On the 23rd of October, 2023, SADAC responded to our request and advised that they were giving the matter due consideration through the relevant organs. Meanwhile, we noted that various meetings have since been conducted by the leadership of SADAC at various levels, in particular, the latest extraordinary summit in the organ, the organ Troika, on the 23rd of March 2024 in Lusaka, Zambia. It is because of this that we have been waiting advisedly, patiently, on our request. On the 29th of April this year, 2024, because considerable time had elapsed, I wrote again to SADC on this matter, delivered a follow-up letter to SADC. We await that response to determine a clear path, a clear path forward to resolve the governance crisis and the leadership dispute that is in the country. What is clear is that the request to SADC is not a measure in desperation but is and remains very simple. That as a regional body, which Zimbabwe signed up to 
in terms of membership and some vested authority as a supranational organization. We require their facilitation to resolve the issues around irregular and disputed elections. The problem of manipulated elections have produced far many problems, particularly a government that is without a mandate and a government that has since culminated into high levels of intolerance, violations, repression, illegal recalls of citizen representatives, even representatives in a disputed election. In itself, an unprecedented move and an encyclopedic infraction of democratic tenets. You have seen unlawful arrests, persecution of citizens upon all kinds of archaic, intimidatory, and suppressive manifestation in themselves, a clear indication of the lack of mandate. It is common knowledge that our country is facing a plethora of challenges and problems. Most of them are basic and symptomatic of bad governance, broken politics, and a disputed leadership. We are suffering from a tanking economy, systematic corruption, population living in extreme poverty, almost 49% of the population, man being looted, almost 1.8 billion in terms of the latest statistics, being looted annually, 100 million worth of gold being smuggled monthly, galloping hyperinflation, half of the population being food insecure, and over 3 million Zimbabweans being forced to migrate with almost over 89% facing unemployment. And this is all because of disputed national processes and national elections. Only a legitimate government chosen by the people of Zimbabwe and the citizens of Zimbabwe has the mandate and confidence to deliver on the necessities and demands of the nation and the public. You've voted for a government of your choice that would deliver health care, energy, water, jobs, stable currents, quality education, and other basic services. You know why you voted for change. The current challenges that we are facing are failing to resolve the huge national debts, high inflation, current distortions, drought starvation, poverty, poor income, a hostile political environment, and of course, an air of sadness and brain drain that are all symptoms of a government without a proper mandate. Zimbabwe's challenges are a direct result of the lack of legitimacy and mandate to govern. A truly elected citizen government is the solution to our governance deficits and the desire and necessity of service delivery in our country. We reiterate, as I do, that this point has been made to Saddam, the AU, and indeed the international community, that it is untied and untenable to sanitize and fertilize theft of elections and electoral malpractices by turning a deaf ear and casting a blind eye to matters of gigantic electoral fraud, such as we have seen in itself an affront to the Africa we want. As you are aware, elections are the highest level through which the mandate is attained and ascertained as a contract between the governing and the governed. No government can justly claim authority to govern unless it is based on the will and consent of the citizens and the people. On that score, none must be allowed to come through to office, through the back door, through the window, or coercive means or command antics and tactics as we have seen in Zimbabwe. Our regional and international institutions are guarantors and custodians of the integrity of institutions, but also integrity of processes, and cannot condemn a process that they have condemned. SADAC condemned the process, the AU condemned the process, and therefore condoning it is clearly untenable. And of course, we don't expect them to ultimately endorse a sham and a fraud. It will be a contradiction in terms to determine a process flawed and yet condone its outcome. Fellow citizens, may I hasten to say, the following measures that we have made are in themselves our deliberate effort and desire to exhaust available remedies domestically and regionally and continentally 
as a peaceful way and means to resolve the national issues, which in itself is not a manifestation of a weakness. We are doing this not because we are devoid of any other means or ways or other ideas. It is strictly because we are committed to finding each other as a nation and amicably resolving our points of conflict, disjuncture, and disagreement. We have committed to the peaceful resolution of disputes and also are intended on making sure that we exhaust all those available peaceful remedies. As you are aware, millions of you agree with this approach. Zimbabwe is too beautiful and precious to be destroyed by flames of political disputes under our watch. We don't want to be the authors of the demise of this great nation. Peace is fragile. Peace is sacrosanct. And as you know, there's no peace in our homes. There's no peace in our communities. And there's no peace in our nation. This is why you have over 3 million Zimbabweans who have already flocked out of the country on account of the absence of this peace. But whatever is remaining of that peace needs to be protected. And that breakdown of peace, which is the ultimate result of the recklessness of those in leadership, knows no winner. The opposite of peace leaves all of us losers. Our beautiful country cannot and can never progress on the back of disunity, division, and successive disputed national processes, including contested elections. We are acutely aware of the agents of this matter, and more importantly, that can, there can never be a talk of 2028 or a viable or stable future for this country without resolving the August 2023, the broken past, and this era and spate of disputed politics. A lot of you have asked, are we going to wait for 2028? No. 2028 is not a date in mind because 2023 has not been resolved. And what we must fix is to fix 2023 and not to wait for 2028. Measures have been put in place and are being put in place to make sure that we secure the victory that the people would want to see and a credible government that people want to see. On my part, I'm doing everything necessary to the extent of God's will to seek a lasting solution to the perennial challenges affecting our beloved country. Locally and internationally, I've engaged all the stakeholders, including our traditional leadership, business community, civil society at large, political parties, other political parties, and members of the diplomatic corps. In particular, I've also sought the mediatory role of the church. I've tried to engage the church leadership in their various representative organizations to try and help us resolve disputed elections and contested national processes, albeit with handicapped progress. I've even numerous, numerously efforted to engage with other parties, in particular with the presidential contender, the leader of Zanapia. He's aware of our point of dispute. I've raised this with him. I've even gone further to give a proposed way forward to resolve the issues that are affecting our country. I can tell you that our point of dispute is clear. It is a disputed election, and that is the center and the basis, the foundation of all our problems. <coughs> and we have proposed a clear way forward, and we have also developed and shared that roadmap with all other key stakeholders, which paper we are ready to share and make public in due course. It's a very clear and practical way of resolving our challenges. Because what this nation needs is leadership. And what this nation has had are part leaders and not national leaders. We need national leaders. And that's why my focus has not been parties, but the nation. I'm available as a national leader, but I'm not available for partisan politics. We have engaged different stakeholders within SADC as a region, particularly the trade unions within SADC, the civil society, but more importantly, at heads of state level, I have engaged leaders, various heads of state, through delegations I have dispatched 
into the various capitals of our region and the continent to brief the esteemed excellences about the dispute in the country, election dispute, the political stalemate, and our proposed way forward. And I must reiterate that the point I made to them is that we acknowledge that there is a de facto government, but the de facto government is not a legitimate government. It is a caretaker government. There is a de facto parliament, and the de facto parliament is not the de jure parliament, but a caretaker parliament. So is the local authorities. So whatever we have are placeholders, but we need a proper mandate from the citizens of Zimbabwe to have a proper government, a position that they have understood and appreciated. I therefore urge you, fellow citizens, having said what I've said, as a brief and update, to take an active role in the peaceful determination of the destiny of our country. I exhort you and encourage you, fellow citizens, the intercessors who have been praying for this great nation, the church, to continue to pray for that smooth and peaceful transition in the country. And it is inevitable. It is nigh. Stay course, stay the course, hold the fort, hold fast. Stand involved and stand ready. Change is upon us. God bless you, Zimbabwe. God bless you, fellow citizens. I thank you.